Hey guys, this is iTroll at iX with Rollout Reviews, bringing you another SH Figure Arts review. This time it is Kamen Rider Wizard Flame Style. So, we'll set him back here and take a look at the box really quick. I really, really like this one. Looks super cool. Fortunately, this flap doesn't quite stay closed, but uh, oh well. It's not too big of a problem. Here is the figure itself. And uh, right off the bat, I have some big problems with the proportions of this figure. And nothing I'm going to say here hasn't been said before, but bear with me. So we'll start with the head. Uh, it's There's just something off about it, and I think it all comes down to the chin being way too big. It's also just a little bit too egg-shaped, and maybe just a little bit too big overall. There's something off. And uh, while it looks okay, it's not nearly as good as it could have been. In fact, it looks a lot better on the promotional images than it does in hand. It also means that that chin piece gets in the way of his collar. You know, you're supposed to be able to tuck his head behind the collar, but you can't do that just because of the way it's sculpted. Oh well. Now the skirt, or rather coattails, uh, also looks a little bit off. It could just be the way it was molded, or the material it's made out of, maybe? It's sort of a rubbery material, which I guess is probably the best option. It would just be ridiculous if these were sheets of plastic on hinges. But uh, whatever the case, it just sort of poofs out a little bit too much. It, it almost looks dress-like instead of coattail-like, which it should. Um, not, not a fan of how that looks, especially towards the back. But, oh well. What are you going to do? It does get better in the uh, Dragon Styles and Infinity Style figures. So, you know, they have improved a bit, but here, once again, it's just a bit off. His chest is the third point of concern, because he's got these six jewels, and uh, the bottom two, more often than not, are covered just by the joint. I think they could have executed that a little bit better, because on the actual suit, that never happens. All six jewels are always present. However, speaking of which, the jewels look fantastic. The translucent plastic on his chest and the translucent plastic on his head uh, catch the light in a way that can only be explained by looking at it. It looks great, and even though he doesn't have any compound eyes, it still looks impressive. The molding detail and the paint detail here is just immaculate. I mean, look at the, the belt there, all the little details and curves. There's even detail underneath the translucent plastic of the hand there. All of the rings on his chain. Details on the bottom of his shoes. I really like the limbs. They have a lot of nice uh, curves and wrinkles like an actual suit which is super cool, the rings on his fingers. You know, all of the detail just looks fantastic little magical symbols around uh, his ears, I suppose. All around, great. It's just the fact that his proportions almost throw the whole thing off. But if that doesn't concern you all that much, if you really don't care about suit accuracy, it's an incredible looking figure. It's just not very true to the source material. Wizard's articulation is limited in plenty of ways, starting with the head. Like I said earlier, just because of the sculpt, you don't have too many of options. You can only get it from side to side about this far without comically bringing up the neck joint over the collar. It's got a lot of range, but none of the positions you can get it in look all that great, to be honest. Now, the arms go forward and back on a very tight and squeaky joint that I'm not sure is going to last very long. Let's just be hopeful. The arms go out about this far. Unfortunately, the shoulder armor here is just awful. It's attached with a very, very simple friction joint, and it pops off super easily. 
it's a lot worse on this side than it is on this side, and on mine it seems to be better than some accounts, but do be aware of that. Now it rotates here, bends at the elbow pretty far, and you've got quite a bit of range out of the wrist, which is good because this guy uses his hands a lot. Now he has technically two joints in his waist, although you're gonna get only a little bit of movement out of the second one. The top one is on a ball joint and it moves around uh, basically as much as I'd want it to. Unfortunately, as I said earlier, it covers up those two jewels, but we've already gone over that. The second joint is placed much further down and the best you're gonna get out of that is a slight rotation. It's worth noting that this belt specifically the driver, comes off super easily, and when you're posing him, it's going to fall off plenty of times. It's a very simple peg joint. This was improved on the later releases, but here, it's no good. Now, his chain is very malleable. It's made out of a rubbery plastic, so uh, moving his legs off to the side isn't all that much of a problem. Likewise, his coattails get out of the way pretty easily, too. Now, if you look inside here, his legs are on the Figuart double hinge system, so you can get the leg up that far, get it back pretty far, too. It bends at the knee, and you got some fair ankle articulation. Unfortunately, the ankles on mine are really, really loose, which makes getting him in just idle, standing there positions with his feet close together uh, really hard because he'll tilt from side to side and eventually fall over. More often than not, this doesn't look all that great, but there are plenty of positions you can get it into that don't look half bad, so I guess I can't complain too much. He does have the toe, but not very much of it. Overall, his articulation just is, is lacking, and he's not all that fun to mess with. His tolerances aren't that great, and he's lacking the uh, toy-like feel that I love with figure arts nowadays. I don't know, there's just something very disappointing about playing with him. I think where this figure really excels is in the accessory count, because it comes with a lot, starting with the ridiculous amount of extra hands. There is an Agito silently weeping manly tears somewhere. First off, he's got standard fists, which look absolutely silly, with massive rings on the end. I feel they could have shaved that down just a bit, but it's not too much of a problem because I don't display him with these very often. A much better option for idle poses, I think, are his calm hands, which I think look great. You also get some hands that invoke his signature pose, with two fingers down and two fingers up showing off the ring. You get some flared out finger hands for showing off wizard style. You get some holding hands for the gun and sword, which are uh, decent, I suppose. You also get this strange hand that's the same, it's a holding hand, but it doesn't have the trigger finger exposed, which is kind of weird. And last but not least, you get a hand that's exactly the same as the holding hand for the right side, except it's got a tilted wrist. And what do you know, it's attached to the sword mode of the sword gun, which looks great. I think this entire thing, aside from the hand over here, is molded in translucent plastic, which is cool because you get details like this and this and this, but is kind of sketchy because if you scratch this thing, you're going to have a gash that shows all the way through. So, uh, there is that, but it's got some great detail. You can actually open up this hand here to show off a magical symbol on the inside and to shake hands for his uh, finisher, which is very, very nice. You also get it in gun mode, what do you know? Doesn't transform, but you get a separate one. So that's neat. All the same features are there and uh, it still looks great. You get an extra driver here that has the hand switched to the opposite side. And finally, 
you get an extra belt and an extra replacement coat. Oh good. We're gonna have to do some swapping, aren't we? I guess it's not that difficult going about doing. The waist, simply enough, just pops off like that. Some people have a really big problem with this, and the waist on theirs just pops off too easily. That is not the case on mine, fortunately. Maybe I just got lucky. Anyway, from here, you just sort of, being very careful, pull that off. That's a very thin little piece of rubber. You don't want to rip that. But there's four little holes and four little pegs. On the replacement, you got the same deal. So just line those up, if you can. And you are good to go. From there, as I said, you have a replacement little belt here that has the chain lifted up out of the way. So, that just slides on there. Snap the whole thing back together. Replace the driver. And you are good to go. That looks really dynamic, and much more often than not, I prefer this in any pose. Even just standing there, he looks a lot cooler this way, and it opens up all of this leg articulation to boot. I very, very much like this accessory, and it's plenty worth the effort swapping it out. Last but not least, this figure actually comes with its very own Tamashi stage, which is neat if you're into that kind of thing. Honestly, I hate this style of Tamashi stage claw. It's way too fiddly and breaks too often. Unfortunately, it's the standard. I much more prefer this style, which clamps to the limbs, but that's just me. What is cool, though, is that you get this special base. Once again, I much more prefer clear Tamashi stages, but I cannot deny that that looks awesome. As a first run bonus, Bandai was offering an extra accessory here called the Strike Wizard Robe. And it looks really cool. Although I'm not sure if it's worth paying extra for nowadays, because this robe does just fine in any given rider kick pose. Overall, I don't think this figure is bad, it's just not very good. If you're not a fan of the wizard design, this is an easy pass. It's not worth the trouble. However, if you love the way wizard looks and are willing to ignore some of the design flaws, I think this definitely deserves a place on your shelf next to all of your other rider figure arts. It's definitely impressive looking, especially in a pose like this. That said, don't expect to be playing with it too often. Anyway, that is about it guys, and this is IXRoll at IX, signing off.